These are all of the parts that come with the Uniboard. Uh, we have resistor 1, which is a 22k resistor. The colour code for that one is red, red, orange, gold. Uh, we have four 10k resistors, which are R2, R4, R8 and R9. They're brown, black, orange, gold. Uh, we have one 120 ohm resistor, which is brown, red, uh, brown, gold. And we have three 330 ohm resistors, which are orange, orange, brown, gold. They are resistor 5, 6 and R7. Uh, we have a Zener diode, which is a 4.9 volt, 1 watt diode. Uh, we have two uh, diodes, with, which are the 1N4001 diodes. That's diode, diode 2 and 3. And we have the three coloured LEDs, green, orange and red. We've got capacitor 1 there and capacitor 2, which is the electrolytic C2. And the socket for the pickaxe chip, it's a standard 8-pin socket. And also the pickaxe chip itself. And moving along, we have the Darlington transistors. There's two of these, Q1 and Q2. And we have two LDRs, the light dependent resistors. And a switch, standard push button momentary PC board mount switch. And that's the 3.5mm download connector, which we'll be connecting our download cable to when we want to program the, uh, the pickaxe uh, chip. And of course we have the Uniboard, which is a single-sided board, but um, the, uh, each pin is actually double-sided, so there's only tracks on one side, on the other side there aren't any. And it's that side that's going to be uh, mounting the components. The uh, manual shows the layout of all of the components there. And we'll start with, uh, we can start wherever we, we like, but um, I um, have started with the 3.5mm connector, uh, along with the 8-pin connector there. Uh, we've got resistor 1 coming in, and then we've got the switch coming in there. And then the three uh, 330 ohm resistors, which are R5, 6 and 7. Now with the LEDs, we want to make sure that the little notch is on top of the uniboard there. So we've got to be careful about that. That was R3 going in there. That's the 120 ohm resistor. And that's R2 going in there, the 10K. And that's the electrolytic capacitor, and that's the other capacitor going in there. Zener diode, just make sure that with the Zener diode you have it the right way around. And that's another 10k resistor there. The transistors are going in now, just make sure that they're the right, right way around. Uh, there's a strip of um, holes on the left hand side of the board, you want to make sure that they don't get into any of those holes there.
Uh, that was one of the dyads going in, and here comes the other one. Again, with these ones, they have a silver stripe on those ones. Make sure that the silver stripe is pointing downwards. And that's another 10k resistor going in. Uh, nearly finished. Uh, we've got the LDRs, the light dependent resistors. What I like to do is have a little bit of um, lead space there and bend them over so that they can track the light when we uh, when we make the light depend uh, light dependent robot. Um, just notice that there's two pins on the right hand side there that aren't used. Also, all of these pins are on the left are not used either. There's also a few pins there for the power cables they're, they're going to be uh, put through later and there's a prototyping area board there that should be all clear. There's also a single pin there available for the 5 volt output. Now we're going to solder. As you can see, I'm holding the component from the underside of the board as I'm soldering. Um, most components won't be falling out because the pins are, uh, or the legs are a little bit bent. Uh, the video is not sped up, it's just a couple of seconds per joint, that's all. And now we're just clipping away some of the leads. Um, I haven't quite finished soldering all of the leads. I just have to clip away some of them to uh, to get into the areas where um, I can't get in, get the uh, soldering iron into. So clipping away the leads will give me a little bit more space to work with. Okay, so I've cut away most of the pins there, and I've cut away the ones that I haven't yet soldered. Um, just have to solder them as well, and I have to make sure that every single joint uh, is looking good before I um, before I continue. This part of the board there is very tricky to get to. And nearly finished there. Now we just have to connect the battery box. First we'll put in the chip. Just make sure that the little notch on the chip is pointing towards the yellow capacitor there. Otherwise it won't work. So we just squeeze that in there. We have to make sure that we don't bend the legs too much as we push it in. And now we're just threading through the leads from the battery box. Make sure that the positive lead, the red lead, is on top. And the reason why we thread these through the holes first is to just add a little bit of uh, stress relief for the cable. And uh, we solder them on. 
and we're pretty much all done. We just have to pull that uh, lead tight. And that's about it. Just have to make sure that the pickaxe is the right way around, the zener diode is the right way around with the stripe on the right, uh, the capacitor is the right way around with the negative side on the right, the two diodes are the right way around, um, the two transistors are the right way around. All of the LEDs up the top, the little notches are on the top of the uh, uniboard. And now we can power up and see how we go downloading a program. More information at apmp.com.au.